Korean language. The Korean language, Hangjio, Chosenmo, is an East Asian language spoken by about 80 million people. It is a member of the Koreanic language family and is the official and national language of both Koreas, North Korea and South Korea, with different standardized official forms used in each territory. It is also one of the two official languages in the Yanbian Korean Autonomous Prefecture and Changbai Korean Autonomous County of Jilin Province, China. Historical and modern linguists classify Korean as a language isolate, however, it does have a few extinct relatives, which together with Korean itself and the Jeju language, spoken in the Jeju province and considered somewhat distinct, form the Koreanic language family. This implies that Korean is not an isolate, but a member of a micro-family. The idea that Korean belongs to the controversial Altaic language family is discredited in academic research. Korean is agglutinative in its morphology and solve in its syntax. Modern Korean descends from Middle Korean, which in turn descends from Old Korean, which descends from the language spoken in prehistoric Korea, labeled Proto-Korean, whose nature is debated, in part because Korean genetic origins are controversial, see Koreans for archaeological and genetic studies of the Koreans. A relation of Korean, together with its extinct relatives which form the Koreanic family, with Japanese, along with its extinct relatives which form the Japonic family has been proposed by linguists such as William George Aston and Samuel Martin. Roy Andrew Miller and others suggested or supported the inclusion of Koreanic and Japonic languages, because of a certain resemblance, in the purported Altaic family, a macro family that would comprise Tungusic, Mongolian and Turkic families. The Altaic hypothesis has since been largely rejected by most linguistic specialists. Chinese characters arrived in Korea, see Sinozenic pronunciations for further information. Together with Buddhism during the Proto Three Kingdoms era, it was adapted for Korean and became known as Hansha, and remained as the main script for writing Korean through over a millennium alongside various phonetic scripts that were later invented, such as Edu, Gugyeol, and Hyangshil. Mainly privileged elites were educated to read and write in Hansha, however, most of the population was illiterate. In the 15th century, King Sejong the Great personally developed an alphabetic featural writing system known today as Hangul. He felt that Hanja was inadequate to write Korean and that this was the cause of its very restricted use. Hangul was designed to either aid in reading Hanja or replace Hanja entirely. Introduced in the document Han Minjinjiam, it was called Yinmun, colloquial script, and quickly spread nationwide to increase literacy in Korea. Hangul was widely used by all the Korean classes but often treated as Mkul, script for female and disregarded by privileged elites, whereas Hansha was regarded as Jinseo, true text. Consequently, official documents were always written in Hansha during the Joseon era. Since most people couldn't understand Hansha, Korean kings sometimes released public notices entirely written in Hangul as early as the 16th century for all Korean classes including uneducated peasants and slaves. By the 17th century, Korean elites Yangban and their slaves exchanged Hangul letters. That indicates high literacy rate of Hangul and Joseon era. Today, Hanja is largely unused in everyday life due to its inconvenience, but it is still important for historical and linguistic studies. Neither South Korea nor North Korea opposes the learning of Hanja, though they are not officially used in North Korea anymore, and their usage in South Korea is mainly reserved for specific circumstances, such as newspapers, scholarly papers, and disambiguation. Since the Korean War, through 70 years of separation, the North-South differences have developed in standard Korean, including variations in pronunciation and vocabulary chosen, but these minor differences can be found in any of the Korean dialects and still largely mutually intelligible. The Korean names for the language are based on the names for Korea used in North Korea and South Korea. The English word Korean is derived from Goryeo which is thought to be the first Korean dynasty known to the Western nations. Korean people in the former USSR refer to themselves as Koryosaramin or Koryoin, literally, Koryo slash Goryeo persons, and call the language Koryomar. In North Korea and China, the language is most often called Joseon Mao, or more formally, Joseon-o. This is taken from the North Korean name for Korea, Joseon a name retained from the Joseon dynasty until the proclamation of the Korean Empire which in turn was annexed by the Empire of Japan. In South Korea, the Korean language is referred to by many names including Hanguk Eo, Korean language, Hanguk Mal, Korean speech, and Uri Mal, our language. In Hanguk Eo and Hanguk Mal, the first part of the word, Hanguk was taken from the name of the Korean Empire. The Han, 
in Hanguk and Dianchuk is derived from salmon, in reference to the three kingdoms of Korea, not the ancient confederacies in the southern Korean peninsula, Walio and Mal mean language and speech, respectively. Korean is also simply referred to as Gukyo, literally national language. This name is based on the same Han characters, meaning nation plus language, that are also used in Taiwan and Japan to refer to their respective national languages. In mainland China, following the establishment of diplomatic relations with South Korea in 1992, the term Kaoxianyu or the short form Kaoyu has normally been used to refer to the standard language of North Korea and Yanbian, whereas Hangu or the short form Hanyu is used to refer to the standard language of South Korea. Some older English sources also use the spelling Korea to refer to the nation, and its inflected form for the language, culture and people, Korea becoming more popular in the late 1800s according to Google's Ngram English Corpus of 2015. The majority of historical and modern linguists classify Korean as a language isolate. There are still a small number who think that Korean might be related to the now discredited Eldaic family. But linguists agree today that typological resemblances can it be used to prove genetic relatedness of languages, as these features are typologically connected and easily borrowed from one language to the other. Such factors of typological divergence as Middle Mongolian's exhibition of gender agreement can be used to argue that a genetic relationship with Altaic is unlikely. The hypothesis that Korean might be related to Japanese has had some supporters due to some overlap in vocabulary and similar grammatical features that have been elaborated upon by such researchers as Samuel E. Martin and Roy Andrew Miller. Sergei Anatolievich Staristan, 1991, found about 25% of potential cognates in the Japanese Korean 100 word Swadesh list. Some linguists concerned with the issue, for example, Alexander Vavin, have argued that the indicated similarities between Japanese and Korean are not due to any genetic relationship, but rather to a sprabun defect and heavy borrowing, especially from ancient Korean into Western Old Japanese. A good example might be Middle Korean salmon Japanese asa, meaning hemp. This word seems to be a cognate, but although it is well attested in Western Old Japanese and Northern Ryukyuan languages, in Eastern Old Japanese it only occurs in compounds, and it is only present in three dialects of the Southern Ryukyuan language group. Also, the doublet wo meaning hemp is attested in Western Old Japanese and Southern Ryukyuan languages. It is thus plausible to assume a borrowed term. See classification of the Japonic languages for further details on a possible relationship. Another lesser-known theory is the Dravidian-Korean languages theory which suggests a southern relation. Korean and Dravidian languages share similar vocabulary, both languages are agglutinative, follow the soft order, nominal and adjectives follow the same syntax, particles are postpositional, modifiers always precede modified words are some of the common features. However, typological similarities such as these could have arisen by chance. For instance, if a given pair of languages were agglutinative, most of the other typological features like soft order, postpositional particles, modifiers preceding modified words might have evolved to be similar by mere chance, this being the general trend observable in most known agglutinative languages. Comparative linguist Kang Gilan proposes 1,300 Dravidian Tamil cognates in Korean, which would significantly outnumber the number of Dravidian cognates he claims are found in Tungusic. Turkic or Ainu. Nevertheless, he suggests that among currently researchable languages, the Nivk language is most closely related to Korean. Yuha Jan Hunan argues that the Kukuryo language could have been an Amuric language related to today's Nivk language. The unclassified Khitan language has many similar Korean vocabulary that are not found in Mongolian or Tungusic languages. This suggests a strong Korean presence or that Khitan was in fact a Koreanic or para Koreanic language. Korean is spoken by the Korean people in North Korea and South Korea and by the Korean diaspora in many countries including the People's Republic of China, the United States, Japan, and Russia. Currently, Korean is the fourth most popular foreign language in China, following English, Japanese, and Russian. Korean speaking minorities exist in these states, but because of cultural assimilation into host countries, not all ethnic Koreans may speak it with native fluency. Korean is the official language of North Korea and South Korea. It is also one of the two official languages of the Yanbian Korean Autonomous Prefecture in China. In North Korea, the regulatory body is the Language Institute of the Academy of Social Sciences, Sohokwahog 10 Hakyo Uso. In South Korea, 
The regulatory body for Korean is the Seoul-based National Institute of the Korean Language, which was created by Presidential Decree on January 23, 1991. Established pursuant to Article 9, Section 2, of the Framework Act on the National Language, the King Sejong Institute is a public institution set up to coordinate the government's project of propagating Korean language and culture. It also supports the King Sejong Institute, which is the institution's overseas branch. The King Sejong Institute was established in response to the topic Korea Institute is a lifelong educational center affiliated with a variety of Korean universities in Seoul, South Korea, whose aim is to promote Korean language and culture support local Korean teaching internationally, and facilitate cultural exchanges. The institute is sometimes compared to language and culture promotion organizations such as the King Sejong Institute. Unlike that organization, however, Topic Korea Institutes operate within established universities and colleges around the world, providing educational materials. Korean has numerous small local dialects, called Mao, literally speech, Satori, or Banjin, in Korean. The standard language, Pyojinio or Pyojin Mal of both South Korea and North Korea is based on the dialect of the area around Seoul, which, as Hanyang, was the capital of Joseon era Korea for 500 years, though the northern standard after the Korean War has been influenced by the dialect of Pyongyang. All dialects of Korean are similar to each other and largely mutually intelligible, with the exception of dialect specific phrases or non standard vocabulary unique to dialects though the dialect of Jeju Island is divergent enough to be sometimes classified as a separate language. One of the more salient differences between dialects is the use of tone, speakers of the Seoul dialect make use of vowel length, whereas speakers of the Gyeongsang dialect maintain the pitch accent of Middle Korean. Some dialects are conservative, maintaining Middle Korean sounds, such as Z, Beta, which have been lost from the standard language, whereas others are highly innovative. There is substantial evidence for a history of extensive dialect leveling, or even convergent evolution or intermixture of two or more originally distinct linguistic stocks, within the Korean language and its dialects. Many Korean dialects have basic vocabulary that is etymologically distinct from vocabulary of identical meaning in standard Korean or other dialects, such as Gyeongsang dialect versus standard Korean garlic chives. This suggests that the Korean peninsula may have at one time been much more linguistically diverse than it is at present. See also the bio-languages hypothesis. Nonetheless, the separation of the two Korean states has resulted in increasing differences among the dialects that have emerged over time. Since the allies of the newly founded nations split the Korean peninsula in half after 1945, the newly formed Korean nations have since borrowed vocabulary extensively from their respective allies. As the Soviet Union helped industrialize North Korea and establish it as a communist state, the North Koreans would therefore borrow a number of Russian terms. Likewise, since the United States helped South Korea extensively to develop militarily, economically, and politically, South Koreans would therefore borrow extensively from English. The differences among northern and southern dialects have become so significant that many North Korean defectors reportedly have had great difficulty communicating with South Koreans after having initially settled into South Korea. In response to the diverging vocabularies, an app called Univaka was designed to help North Korean defectors learn South Korean terms by translating them into North Korean ones. More info can be found on the page North-South Differences in the Korean Language. Aside from the standard language, there are few clear boundaries between Korean dialects, and they are typically partially grouped according to the regions of Korea. The semi-vowels and are represented in Korean writing by modifications to vowel symbols, see below. The ipa symbol, a subscript double straight quotation mark, shown here with a placeholder circle, is used to denote the tense consonants. Its official use in the extensions to the ipa is for strong articulation, but is used in the literature for focalized voice. The Korean consonants also have elements of stiff voice, but it is not yet known how typical this is of focalized consonants. They are produced with a partially constricted glottis and additional subglottal pressure in addition to tense vocal tract walls, laryngeal lowering, or other expansion of the larynx. Is closer to a near open central vowel, though is still used for tradition. Is aspirated and becomes an alveolo palatal before or for most speakers, but see north south differences in the Korean language. This occurs with a tense fricative in all the affricates as well. At the end of a syllable, changes to, example, biasiot, mushroom.
term, traditionally, was disallowed at the beginning of a word. It disappeared before, and otherwise became. However, the inflow of Western loanwords changed the trend, and now word initial, mostly from English loanwords, are pronounced as a free variation of either or. The traditional prohibition of word initial became a morphological rule called initial law, in South Korea, which pertains to Sino-Korean vocabulary. Such words retain their word initial in North Korea. All obstruents, plosives, affricates, fricatives, at the end of a word are pronounced with no audible release. Plosive stops become nasal stops before nasal stops. Hangul spelling does not reflect these assimilatory pronunciation rules, but rather maintains the underlying, partly historical morphology. Given this, it is sometimes hard to tell which actual phonemes are present in a certain word. One difference between the pronunciation standards of North and South Korea is the treatment of initial, and initial. For example, grammatical morphemes may change shape depending on the preceding sounds. Examples include yun slash noin, and i slash ga. Sometimes sounds may be inserted instead. Examples include oil slash rel, euro slash ro, sao slash sao, idng slash dunji, and ya slash ya. However, euro slash ro is somewhat irregular, since it will behave differently after a real consonant. Some verbs may also change shape morphophonemically. Korean is an agglutinative language. The Korean language is traditionally considered to have nine parts of speech. For details, see Korean parts of speech. Modifiers generally precede the modified words, and in the case of verb modifiers, can be serially appended. The basic form of a Korean sentence is subject object verb, but the verb is the only required and immovable element, and word order is highly flexible, as in many other agglutinative languages. The relationship between a speaker or writer and his or her subject and audience is paramount in Korean grammar. The relationship between speaker slash writer and subject referent is reflected in honorifics, whereas that between speaker slash writer and audience is reflected in speech level. When talking about someone superior in status, a speaker or writer usually uses special nouns or verb endings to indicate the subject's superiority. Generally, someone is superior in status if he or she is an older relative a stranger of roughly equal or greater age, or an employer, teacher, customer, or the like. Someone is equal or inferior in status if he or she is a younger stranger, student, employee or the like. Nowadays, there are special endings which can be used in declarative, interrogative, and imperative sentences, and both honorific or normal sentences. Honorifics in traditional Korea were strictly hierarchical. The caste and estate systems possessed patterns and usages much more complex and stratified than this is today. The intricate structure of the Korean honorific system flourished in traditional culture and society. Honorifics in contemporary Korea are now used for people who are psychologically distant. Honorifics are also used for people who are superior in status. For example, older people, teachers, and employers. There are seven verb paradigms or speech levels in Korean and each level has its own unique set of verb endings which are used to indicate the level of formality of a situation. Unlike honorifics, which are used to show respect towards the referent, the person spoken of, speech levels are used to show respect towards a speaker's or writer's audience, the person spoken to. The names of the seven levels are derived from the non-honorific imperative form of the verb, hada, do, in each level, plus the suffix, che, hanja, which means style. The three levels with high politeness, very formally polite, formally polite, casually polite, are generally grouped together as John Damal, whereas the two levels with low polite knees, formally impolite, casually impolite, are Banmal, in Korean. The remaining two levels, neutral formality with neutral politeness, high formality with neutral politeness, are neither polite nor impolite. Nowadays, younger generation speakers no longer feel obligated to lower their usual regard toward the referent. It is common to see younger people talk to their older relatives with banmal. This is not out of disrespect, but instead it shows the intimacy and the closeness of the relationship between the two speakers. Transformations in social structures and attitudes in today's rapidly changing society have brought about change in the way people speak. In general, Korean lacks grammatical gender. As one of the few exceptions, the third person singular pronoun has two different forms, gyu, male, and gyunyeo, female. Before were invented in need of translating she into Korean, was the only one third person singular pronoun, and had no grammatical gender. However, 
one can still find stronger contrasts between the sexes within Korean speech. Some examples of this can be seen in 1. Softer tone used by women in speech, 2. A married woman introducing herself as someone's mother or wife, not with her own name, 3. The presence of gender differences in titles and occupational terms for example, a sejong is a company president and yosejong is a female company president, 4. Females sometimes using more tag questions and rising tones in statements, also seen in speech from children. In Western societies, individuals tend to avoid expressions of power asymmetry, mutually addressing each other by their first names for the sake of solidarity. Between two people of asymmetrical status in a Korean society, people tend to emphasize differences in status for the sake of solidarity. Koreans prefer to use kinship terms, rather than any other terms of reference. In traditional Korean society, Women have long been in disadvantaged positions. Korean social structure traditionally was a patriarchically dominated family system that emphasized the maintenance of family lines. This structure has tended to separate the roles of women from those of men. The core of the Korean vocabulary is made up of native Korean words. A significant proportion of the vocabulary, especially words that denote abstract ideas, are Sino Korean words, either. The exact proportion of Sino-Korean vocabulary is a matter of debate. Sohn, 2001, stated 50 to 60 percent. Later, the same author, 2006, p. 5, gives an even higher estimate of 65 percent. Jiang Jadu, one of the compilers of the dictionary Urimal Coin Seijin, asserts that the proportion is not so high. He points out that Korean dictionaries compiled during the colonial period include many unused Sino-Korean words. In his estimation, the proportion of native Korean vocabulary in the Korean language might be as high as 70%. Most of the vocabulary consists of two sets of words, native Korean and Sino-Korean respectively. It is similar to that of English, native English words and Latin equivalent sue is water aqua, fire flame, sea marine, two dual, sun solar. Therefore just like other Korean words, Korean has two sets of numeral systems. However, Unlike English and Latin which belong to the same Indo-European family and bear a certain resemblance, Korean and Chinese are genetically unrelated and the two sets of words differ completely. All Sino-Korean morphemes are monosyllabic as in Chinese, whereas native Korean morphemes are polysyllabic. To a much lesser extent, some words have also been borrowed from Mongolian and other languages. Conversely, the Korean language itself has also contributed some loan words to other languages, most notably the Tsushima dialect of Japanese. The vast majority of loan words other than Sino-Korean come from modern times, approximately 90% of which are from English. Many words have also been borrowed from Western languages such as German via Japanese, Arirbe to, part-time job, Alaruki, allergy, Gibsu or Jibizu, plaster cast used for broken bones. Some Western words were borrowed indirectly via Japanese during the Japanese occupation of Korea, taking a Japanese sound pattern, for example dozen dasu desu. Most indirect Western borrowings are now written according to current Hangulization rules for the respective Western language, as if borrowed directly. There are a few more complicated borrowings such as German Y, see names of Germany, the first part of whose endonym in Deutschland the Japanese approximated using the kanji doitsu that were then accepted into the Korean language by their Sino-Korean pronunciation, dok plus il equals dog il. In South Korean official use, a number of other Sino-Korean country names have been replaced with phonetically oriented hangulizations of the country's endonyms or English names. Because of such a prevalence of English in modern South Korean culture and society, lexical borrowing is inevitable. English-derived Korean, or Konglish, is increasingly used. The vocabulary of the South Korean dialect of the Korean language is roughly 5% loanwords, excluding Sino-Korean vocabulary. However, Due to North Korea's isolation, such influence is lacking in North Korean speech. Korean uses words adapted from English in ways that may seem strange to native English speakers. For example, fighting, is a term of encouragement like come when slash go, on, in English. Something that is service, is free or on the house. A building referred to as an aparta, is an apartment, but in fact refers to a residence more akin to a condominium, and a type of pencil that is called a sharp is a mechanical pencil. Like other borrowings, many of these idiosyncrasies, including all the examples listed above, appear to be imported into Korean via Japanese, or influenced by Japanese. 
Many English words introduced by a Japanese pronunciation have been reformed as in melon, which was once called marin, as in Japanese. North Korean vocabulary shows a tendency to prefer native Korean over Sino Korean or foreign borrowings, especially with recent political objectives aimed at eliminating foreign influences on the Korean language in the North. In the early years, the North Korean government tried to eliminate Sino Korean words. Consequently, South Korean may have several Sino Korean or foreign borrowings which are not in North Korean. Before the creation of the modern Korean alphabet, known as Chosongul in North Korea and as Hangul in South Korea, people in Korea, known as Joseon at the time primarily wrote using classical Chinese alongside native phonetic writing systems that predate Hangul by hundreds of years, including Edu, Hyangshul, Gugyeol, and Gokpul. However, due to the fundamental differences between the Korean and Chinese languages and the large number of characters to be learned, the lower classes, who often didn't have the privilege of education, had much difficulty in learning how to write using Chinese characters. To assuage this problem, King Sejong created the unique alphabet known as Hangul to promote literacy among the common people. The Korean alphabet was denounced and looked down upon by the Yangban aristocracy, who deemed it too easy to learn, but it gained widespread use among the common class, and was widely used to print popular novels which were enjoyed by the common class. With growing Korean nationalism in the 19th century, the Gopo reformists push, and the promotion of Hangul in schools, in 1894, Hangul displaced Hanja as Korea's national script. Hanja are still used to a certain extent in South Korea, where they are sometimes combined with Hangul, but this method is slowly declining in use, even though students learn Hanja in school. Below is a chart of the Korean alphabet symbols and their canonical up of values. The letters of the Korean alphabet are not written linearly like most alphabets, but instead arranged into blocks that represent syllables. So, while the word bibimbap is written as eight characters in a row in English, in Korean it is written as three syllable blocks in a row. The syllable blocks are then written left to right, top to bottom. Modern Korean is written with spaces between words, a feature not found in Chinese or Japanese, except when Japanese is written exclusively in hiragana, as in children's books. Korean punctuation marks are almost identical to Western ones. Traditionally, Korean was written in columns, from top to bottom, right to left, but it is now usually written in rows, from left to right, top to bottom. The Korean language used in the North and the South exhibits differences in pronunciation, spelling, grammar and vocabulary. In North Korea, palatalization of is optional, and can be pronounced between vowels. Words that are written the same way may be pronounced differently such as the examples below. The pronunciations below are given in revised romanization, Makun Rai Shower and Hangul, the last of which represents what the Hangul would be if one were to write the word as pronounced. No wiki less than slash no wiki similar pronunciation is used in the north whenever the hanja is attached to a Sino-Korean word ending in, or. In the south, this rule only applies when it is attached to any single character Sino-Korean word. Some words are spelled differently by the North and the South, but the pronunciations are the same. Some words have different spellings and pronunciations in the North and the South. Most of the official languages of North Korea are from the Northwest, Pyongan dialect, and the standard language of South Korea is the standard language, sole language close to Gyeonggi dialect. Some of which were given in the phonology section above. In general, when transcribing place names, North Korea tends to use the pronunciation in the original language more than South Korea, which often uses the pronunciation in English. For example, some grammatical constructions are also different. Some vocabulary is different between the North and the South in the North, gilamets and are the symbols used for quotes, in the South, quotation marks equivalent to the English ones, and, are standard, although and are also used. For native English speakers, Korean is generally considered to be one of the most difficult languages to master despite the relative ease of learning Hangul. For instance, the United States Defense Language Institute places Korean in Category 4, which also includes Japanese, Chinese, for example Mandarin, Cantonese and Shanghainese, and Arabic. This means that 63 weeks of instruction, as compared to just 25 weeks for Italian, French, Portuguese and Spanish are required to bring an English-speaking student to a limited working level of proficiency in which he or she has sufficient capability to meet routine social demands and limited job requirements and can deal with concrete topics in past, present, and future tense. Similarly, 
the Foreign Service Institute School of Language Studi Esplis's Korean in Category 4, the highest level of difficulty. The study of the Korean language in the United States is dominated by Korean American Heritage Language students. In 2007 they were estimated to form over 80% of all students of the language at non-military universities. However, Sejong Institutes in the United States have noted a sharp rise in the number of people of other ethnic backgrounds studying Korean between 2009 and 2011. They attribute this to rising popularity of South Korean music and television shows. In 2018, it was reported that the rise in K pop was responsible for the increase in people learning the language in U.S. universities. There are two widely used tests of Korean as a foreign language the Korean Language Proficiency Test, KLPT, and the Test of Proficiency in Korean. Topic. The Korean Language Proficiency Test, an examination aimed at assessing non native speakers' competence in Korean, was instituted in 1997, 17,000 people applied for the 2005 sitting of the examination. The topic was first administered in 1997 and was taken by 2,274 people. Since then the total number of people who have taken the topic has surpassed 1 million, with more than 150,000 candidates taking the test in 2012. Topic is administered in 45 regions within South Korea and 72 nations outside of South Korea with a significant portion being administered in Japan and North America, which would suggest the targeted audience for topic is still primarily foreigners of Korean heritage. This is also evident in topic's website, where the examination is introduced as intended for Korean heritage students. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.